My Lords, I am pleased to rise to speak to my amendments 485, 505, 510 and 512 and thank the Government for making time so soon after the conclusion of the debate on Monday. I declare my interests as a board member of the Church Commissioners as set out on the register and as the Church of England's lead bishop for church buildings. Noble Lords will also recall the debate on Amendment 163 brought by the Noble Baroness Lady Scott of Needham Market, which took place earlier in committee on the 15th of March. My Lords, I have tabled these four amendments to the Bill to clarify the issue of local authority funding responsibilities for all Christian churches, including parish churches. This Bill affords the opportunity to bring much needed clarity to this issue and resolve what is a long-standing problem. I'm delighted to say that these amendments have received strong cross-party support. I'm particularly grateful to the Noble Lords Lord Cormac and Lord Best and the Noble Baroness Lady Andrews for acting as sponsors. Lady Andrews is unable to be in her place today, but I am assured of her continued support for these amendments. I'm pleased to say these amendments have also had the backing of the Church in Wales, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of England and Wales, and the Methodist Church, amongst others. The National Association of Local Councils and the Society of Local Council Clerks are supportive, as are many in the heritage sector. Last June, I also had the pleasure of meeting with the Right Honourable Robert Jenrick, MP, who, as a former Secretary of State for Communities, made clear his personal support prior to his returning to government in a different role. Parish churches are vital to the flourishing of their local communities. The Warm Welcome campaign, for instance, saw millions benefit from spaces for relationship, community building and practical support over the last hard winter period. Clarifying the current confusion in law would help local churches continue to play such an important role in their areas. In many parts of the country, churches are the only community buildings open and available to all. The National Churches Trust House of Good report, published in 2021-2022, estimated the social and economic contribution of UK church buildings across all generations to be £55 billion using the Treasury's own calculations. It found that investing £1 in a church project returned £16 of community benefit not a bad return on investment. My amendments would remove the prohibition against parish councils funding places of worship that are in the 1894 Local Government Act, which sits in conflict with the 1972 Local Government Act and the 2011 Localism Act and is the cause of reluctance on the part of local councils to grant aid to places of worship for fear of legal challenge. To reassure the House, the Localism Act enables all faith communities to apply for grant funding. Specifically, my Amendment 485 would insert a new clause to remove the prohibition concerning churches and ecclesiastical charities in Section 811 of the Local Government Act 1894, and would ensure that local authorities' spending power under Section 81K could be used to make grants to places of worship. Consequently, Amendment 505 will provide for this new clause to extend to England and Wales. Amendment 510 would provide for the new clause to come into force two months after this bill receives royal assent. And Amendment 512 would amend the bill's long title to include reference to the new clause's subject matter. I will turn to the Noble Minister's letter of the 27th of January 2023 to all peers. 
The Minister will be aware that I wrote to her in response on the 21st of February and thanked her for her reply, but I feel to give clarity to the House a few clarifications need to be put on the record. The Minister mentioned in her letter that the current set of laws applies solely to Church of England parishes. However, it is worth noting that the scope of church buildings impacted extends beyond those in the Church of England. Indeed, evidence collected by the Historic Religious Buildings Alliance shows that the ban on local council funding is also being applied to other Christian denominations. The noble minister also said in her letter that there is limited evidence that this is an issue. I would urge the minister to consider the case studies in the Historic Religious Buildings Alliance sent to her on the 15th of February and the lengthy correspondence her department has had over many years with the Church of England on this matter. Finally, the minister mentioned in her letter to peers that only the courts are empowered to give an authoritative interpretation of the law. <coughs> the cost of bringing a legal case is, I am sure she will accept, going to be prohibitive to a parish. In contrast, the minor change these amendments seek to make will resolve the question of interpretation simply and effectively without the necessity for such action. Meanwhile, church buildings continue to lose out on an important funding opportunity with negative consequences for our national heritage and for those communities they serve. Those who give their time and resources to support their parishes are too often unsung heroes who should be thanked for their continued generosity. These are important community buildings, over 12,000 of which are of particular historic interest. I should also stress that this proposal is placing no new funding obligation on local authorities. My amendments would not entail any additional cost or demand, upon, or demand on them or on His Majesty's Government. In closing, I would like to thank the Parish Council's team in the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities who have been in touch with officials at the Church of England National Church Institutions to indicate the Government is exploring their options following the Historic Religious Buildings Alliance consultation and hope the Noble Minister is able to be more forthcoming with details. I very much look forward to hearing the contributions of other noble lords on these amendments, and I beg to move the amendments in my name on the order paper. <laughs>